Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Electra Voice, makers of the RE20 microphone, the industry standard for broadcasters and now podcasters alike. Check them out at electrovoice.com. I saw this uh, gentleman playing yesterday for the Irish music. Uh, what was it called, Karen? Yeah, you're ahead of me. I don't know. It was, it, was, it was a group of Irish musicians playing around the corner. And I had gone in to see my friends Oppenheimer from Belfast, who we did a podcast with last year at South by Southwest. And they said, oh, you've got to see this musician playing before, a simple kid. I'm like, okay, I trust your judgment. Went in, we were blown away. We begged his manager, you've got to find time for him, because we want him to play at the salon. And I want to interview him because I became an instant fan. And as a fellow musician, musician musicians are jaded pe- people by nature. You know, like we've seen it all, we know it all. You know, maybe I can play an augmented seventh. I don't know. I'll, I try. I try my best. But when you see something that really resonates with your soul, you want to share it with people. And that's part of our zeitgeist for the site. When you find great culture, re- whether it's a poet, a dancer, a writer, a musician, you want to share it with the globe. And podcasting and the internet is a really easy way to do it because we're giving the content away for free. And it's really smart culture, fun stuff, stuff you're not going to see on TV. Next year at this time, Simple Kid could be the breakout artist in America, we hope. Tokyo, we hope. Are you listening, St. Patrick? It is St. Patrick's Day after all, (laughs) right? So we want these, we want to share, I want to share, Richard and I, we want to share all of this great culture with the world, with the universe. So I saw Kieran yesterday. He was graciously accepted. He's got a very busy schedule. And anyway, why the name Simple Kid? Uh, somebody kind of on the street shouted at me as an insult, and instead of being insulted, I thought it was very clever. And so you started as a busker. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it was kind of a reminder to just keep things basic at the end of the day. You just need to write music and put it on a format and stick it out. And this is kind of like a mental reminder that you don't need any other kind of cooks and stuff. You just do it on your own. So, I mean, it's a great name, Simple Kid. The concept of what, how you utilize new technology with the soul of a bard, this, the, this street performer, if you will, is really a clever way of juxta- juxtaposing new technology with just the... The old days, that's how people got their information. Hmm. You, you as the bard would tell people news or whatever it may be. Now, songwriting has developed, and you know, now there's socially driven lyrics, and... You've got a lot of clever lyric interplay. Do you, when you go into songwriting, are you thinking of things or do you just allow yourself to be a conduit for um, creativity? I think you just sort of sit down and do something. That's as simple as it is. You, you just as long as you're sort of sitting there and giving some time to it, something happens. But I'm terrified to actually think of what I'm doing because I think it'll go away if I actually kind of analyze it. So, you know. Do you wake up in the middle of the night and have your... Uh, writer's pad next to you and go, that's a great idea. I do that all the time, but in the morning, those ideas are always rubbish with me. You know, that seems like absolute genius, and then I realize it's actually Bohemian Rhapsody I've been playing in my head, so, you know, it's <laughs> you done. Be, you got to scrap it and do it over again. Yeah. So do you approach songwriting as, as work, or is it fun? Uh, it's most definitely fun. I kind of do it in my own bedroom, so it's, uh, if it was work, I probably wouldn't get around to doing it, you know. So it's the kind of thing that keeps me going through the day. And, and what was it about utilizing this technology with it? Did, were, did, were you drawn to the music first and then this, or did somebody say you should try this? Or It was music first for ages, but I got a gig with a, a guy called Richard Ashcroft, who's very big sure. in the UK. the Verve, lead singer the Verve. But I'd never played to his audience, and a lot of my songs are basically lyrics, and I thought, well, I'm going to die on stage because, you know, some of them, you need the lyrics to get the song, so we just thought of a way to project the lyrics, and the kind of developed from there. That was the first thing, was just literally one song projecting lyrics, and then, oh, that went down really well, that's quite unusual. And then I realized I can kind of turn up in a car and do it on the side of the street if it's, you know, with a plug, I need a plug. Right, of course. Well, and you need the adapter in America, as we <laughs> found out. Yes. You can't have a plug, a UK plug without an adapter here, so. Education. Well, it's really, it's, it's really a fascinating, and it, the great thing is I think it really resonates with people. And yeah. you, they feel like they're being, they're like, almost part of your presentation on stage well it's very unfan it's very at the end of the day simple you know it is like technology is being used but at the end of the day it's kind of just like having a banner behind you so it's in a way it's very kind of homely and simple still dylan did that first right with the cue cards ah, that guy you know, yeah. steals what, 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 all my ideas <laughs> 
Well, you know what they say. They say you, you, there are no new ideas. We just keep recycling the old ones. So Dylan probably pinched it from somebody else that he saw. Yeah, yeah. imagine. Yeah. Anyway, what is it about your music that you think resonates with people? Um, it's lyrics about everyday, quite banal stuff that actually inspires it as opposed to grandiose kind of... Uh, some people write beautiful aspirational music and that resonates as well, but my thing, if it does work, I think it's in kind of almost dealing with the opposite, dealing with the stuff that we all have to do, not the spectacular people, but the kind of everyday. So it's very inclusive, you know, it's, nobody's right. not allowed into the Simple Kid Club. So. I think without further ado, I'd, I'd like to present Simple Kid at the Culture Catch Salon on St. Patrick's Day. I think it's apropos. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Simple Kid, as the man said. I'm going to sing about uh, six or seven songs while you're having your drinks. And if you got any friends, give them a text or a call. Get them down here. Thank you very much. 